Hey guys, thanks for following along. Usually I'm building aircraft. This time we're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. A floor moves up and down in the pool and literally can come out of the water to turn it into a dance floor or just a couple feet deep if I got little kids in the pool. We have windows that see through into the pool. We got some crazy engineering with concrete that spans clear out over the backyard sitting on a single column. The pool actually sits over a garage. So we're gonna show you how we engineer so cars can drive under the pool. There's a lot of crazy things we got to do. Big craning, big rebar, big construction, and a ton of engineering. This is in Utah. It's gonna be able to freeze. And so I need this system to auto winterize. So I'm gonna show you some big underground water vaults that drain all the pipes every time a pump turns off, either from me or from a power outage so that this pool can be run 365 days a year. We're doing radiant floor heating, all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Follow along, I hope you like this. You know, I love engineering. I hope you like this. As soon as we get this house done, we're gonna get back to building a few airplanes. I'm actually building airplanes while building the house. So I hope you follow along all of it. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, my daughter Ashlyn and I are working on a really cool project. It's a perfect Saturday afternoon project. A couple days ago, we formed up this little concrete ring, put rebar around it. Inside of it, you'll see a big two inch gas main, comes up, has a regulator, pressure regulator, steps down, goes to three more gas lines that come up over here. These have water pipes, electric pipes, and the gas. Each one of those is a fire waterfall. We'll have water come out the underside and fire out the top. And this is also a fire pit. So today we were working on putting in a slope bottom. So first we poured the ring on top of this slab. Today we poured a steep slope on the inside so that when water goes through the fire pit rings, which is this is our natural gas fire pit rings. There's three of them. The water, and it, when it rains or snows that goes in here, has got to go somewhere. And I don't want it to puddle in the bottom of this concrete ring and then have freezing issues and crack things out. So we've got the concrete slope in the bottom of this so that when the rain comes through or the snow comes through, the, the rocks we put on top of the fire pit, it has a place to go and slope to the middle where I pre-plumbed six, eight months ago a two inch main line that's the drain that goes down and ties into a variety of drains through the entire home and drains out. Every one of these drain lines are sloped like a sewer system. So if some rocks or debris got in there, they'd run out. Of course, I wouldn't allow rocks to get in there. So on top of this two inch main line, I'm gonna put a stainless steel grill as a fine mesh so that if I ever have to get in and service and rocks fall in, they won't make it into the pipe, but I can flow Shoot, I could throw a garden hose in there nonstop and never fill it up. So it's a fun little project. Ashlyn's been great. She's been working on waterproofing with me today, electrical lines, stuff for the pool. She's just the perfect friend and buddy to have the greatest daughter ever to come out and work on construction projects because she's really good at it and she outworks the majority of the men on this site. And the guys that are on this site that hear me say this in this video, they know it's true, so they won't even be offended. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot more to do. I'm ready to do the finished trowel on this, get the slope fine-tuned, back to work. So this is Cicaflex for concrete and it is absolutely unreal waterproof and it just never comes off if you prep it right. So when I made these tracks for the pool deck, 
I did add a two by fours using all thread that I glued into the spandex slab below this slab so that I could put nuts on either side and adjust the two by four up and down to get the perfect slope, slope with the laser. And then I poured this slab, did all these water drains this way, and now I'm filling up the concrete in here with Secaflex. But to get it to bond really well, first of all, I cleaned out the construction debris. Then I scrubbed it, washed it, vacuumed it. Then I got muriatic acid diluted and I acid cleaned it. So it gives an acid etch to the concrete and opens up the pores. Then I wash, scrub that clean to get the muriatic acid out, vacuumed it, dried it. Then before I started to do this, I put blue tape just to stick down, but you can see this different color. That is just a clear lacquer. I just sprayed a little bit of lacquer on it, just a dusting so the tape sticks, but it also makes sure that all the last little dust, if you didn't get it all is out, it kind of blows it out. It's a five-step process. It sounds like it's a lot of work. It's really not. It went really fast. We did all this in a couple hours. I got two guys helping me. And now I'm just putting the Sika Flex in. There's little air bubbles you can see all the way down here. These were little air bubbles under the two by four that made the drain. But when you put in self-leveling Sika Flex, it will just flow and make a solid rubber bed about a quarter inch thick. Now, what I love about this pool drain, normally pool drains, are about that deep on the little little tracks and you see them everywhere around the pool. I didn't want to see those tracks and I wanted to be able to flow more water just in case we had crazy heavy rain. So this two by four is a much larger drain, but I made it so I don't have to see it. So when I embed the quartzite top, all this would be quartzite, I drilled little holes. So you just see little holes throughout the quartzite rather than big plastic drain tracks. And then everywhere one of these drains are, right here, there will be a removable cap in case there's debris. There'll be a stainless steel screen over that. Really all intents and purposes, you won't even see the pool drain. So I'm gonna quickly finish this off, get this first coat, let it cure up, do a second coat. Um, with how thick it is, that's all I'm gonna need. Let's get back to work. Still, <laughs> since this pool's round, almost every pipe going around the perimeter, I have to warm up. I've got one torch going, and as soon as I get Dylan off the camera, I'll get a second torch going. With one torch, this will take me 18 minutes to get warm enough. You don't want to burn it, you just want to slowly heat it. With two torches going, when Dylan puts the phone down and gives me a hand, this will go from almost 20 minutes all the way down to seven because it's not cooling on one side while we're heating the other. Both sides get heated. So we're gonna go ahead and warm this up and then we're gonna bend it around the arc of the pool. When this is ready to go, it's gonna be like a little limp noodle. We can put it into any shape and when we're ready, we'll put a warm bag and go down it and just slowly help it warm up and it uh, works really well so Dylan put the phone down back to work <laughs> all right guys you can see that's becoming a bit of a wet noodle it's just right I'm gonna hurry and get it in bend it around the wall to bending pipes like this is to not be in a hurry. You want to crank up the torch and go fast because you don't want to spend so much time on it, but that would give up the integrity of the pipe. Now, this pipe can handle a couple hundred PSI. Typical pool is going to be running around 25 PSI, but if you aren't cleaning your filters, we have a really big pump where you're running excessive high pressure, you could hit 50 plus PSI really easy. So, we want to try and keep all of the couple hundred PSI the pipe can handle. So take your time, warm it from both multiple sides, turn the pipe the entire time and wait till you can pick it up and it just starts to sag. Also something else that's really, really critical. You always want to run the pipes longer than you need and you want to mark where your start and your stop is going to be where you're going to cut it. 
you do not want to heat the area of the pipe that you're going to put a coupler you're going to deform it so you can actually heat one area leave a section heat another area and do multiple bends still cut in the area you did not warm up and cut it and put a coupler or a bend or a 90 but you cannot warm the entire pipe where you're going to put a coupler you're going to go to put a coupler on and you're going to see an eighth inch gap and one area might not even go on it might egg shape on you so just keep in mind warm the area you want to bend stay away from the area you don't couplers will work perfect and it will still have all its integrity you guys know the drill back to work Trains, hot tub, swimming pool, and the two water balls. Hi right, guys, we're on the final stage of all the plumbing for the pool. So behind me, you can just see one of a bunch of the round walls on the pool that we can access all the plumbing. So part of this design was to make a pool that could automatically winterize itself and that all the plumbing would completely drain. So if you take a look at all these pipes, every one of them have about a one degree slope. It all goes around the pool's radius, drops down into the basement. And if you've ever owned a pool that has a leak, it's the worst thing you can have happen. And Often it happens because of settling around the pool, earth movement breaks them. I won't have settling or earth movement like that, so it's a little less likely to have a leak, but it could happen. So in designing the layout of all the plumbing and why you see so much in a couple of key zones, as I made sure that all the unions and joints were somewhere I could access really easy and not one solitary pipe is in the soil or outside of the housing envelope. So if there were a situation where the power went off for a week at a time, I wouldn't even necessarily need to drain the pool or empty all the lines. Just the envelope of the house will keep all the pool lines warm. But if it went for an excessive period of time or I needed to completely drain the pool in the winter for some reason, I have that option. I can flip a valve down in the basement. All the lines will auto drain, including every single jet, nozzle, pickup, floor drain, wall skimmer, every single pipe. And it may not sound hard, but it's actually really difficult to get every pipe to slope one way to a drain. But what it does give me is 100% certainty that if I needed to empty the pool in the winter, that I will not have a single solitary spot where I have water trapped in a pipe and I'm trying to blow air through it to get it out, which doesn't always work and I won't have a freeze situation. So there's a sneak peek at some of it. I'm super excited because in about 30 more minutes, this cool guy up here, this is Shane Morris. He's a great guy, done insulation on my homes for decades now. I hate to admit that I'm that age. And so are you Shane. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm insulating the walls of the pool. This is the pool right here. I'm insulating the lid of the pool. I still got to strap up and do straps across the joists. There's a bit more work underneath to do, but we're closing up the pool and I'm even insulated on the inside of the home. That's more because I love to turn up the heat in the pool and turn it into a hot tub for big parties once in a while. So the pool can go to like 101 and be a giant steam bath for some big event. Um, I don't want that 100 degree water heating the wall and warming the inside of the garage or vice versa summer versus winter so i am isolating out the pool so behind this six inches of insulation goes 24 inches of concrete then the water of the pool that's a whole lot of talking enough of that let's get back to work guys the fire pit's getting a little bit closer i've now rubber coated the inside i've just put two coats in so far i'm going to make a mess so i'll coat again after i make a mess if you look right here i've got these stainless steel rings this i'm now going to bolt on the inside and i 
I bend them, I can make it chase the inside and make a ledge by bending it and bolting it to the concrete. Once I get that, I just got back from getting this made. This is a quarter inch plate of aluminum. And if, if we did our job framing the wood, this should drop right in there perfectly onto that ring with almost no clearance. And I tried to get it really perfect. So we'll find out in a second, but I'll first put on the lip that holds this ring. And then this will be able to drop into this and land on top of it. And I'm gonna put some uh, stainless steel pins that allow me to take that and just drop it and pin set it so it can come in and out. But I'll just drop it in, then I can put all the rock on top of it or glass or whatever we want for decoration for the fire. But if I ever need to service it, I can just lift that out, check this out. It should be so tight sealed between this and how much overlap and the seam I'll coke in, coke in on this, which will be permanently bolted onto that shelf. Uh, this will never need to come out, but if I had to get in there, I can. But we shouldn't get any rocks or anything dropping down into this, the way I've got it sealed up with that solid plate. Anything that gets in there should just be water, and that's intentional. I uh, used a little laser, drew a line just by spinning this little red laser around in a circle on top of the gas regulator. Now we're gonna see if this fits. Kind of suspecting we might need to do a little trimming on it because I made it a tight squeeze on the computer. So we'll find out here. Well, never mind. We got lucky. So we framed this box out of wood and poured the concrete. I suspected a little movement, but I guess it didn't move at all. So when we stripped the wood off, I mean, this is as good as it gets. Awesome. Let's get the top on, start hooking up gas lines. We got a little spark igniter right here. You can probably, I don't know that you'll be able to hear it. I've got the ground touching it. That will automatically light it up and then put the gas on. I'm actually gonna use stone on the outside or brick to match the stone or the brick on the house. I'll likely use stone because my wife and I own uh, Stone Quarry is one of our businesses and uh, we have a great partner Reese and so we're gonna use a lot of stone on this house we kind of get it for a good deal <laughs> anyway let's get this fire pit done get some stone on it about to work <laughs> 